At SC22, they let me cut a liquid cooling loop for a server with an ax and it basically didn't spill. I bet your desktop wouldn't do that. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. And today we are going to talk about all of the really cool things that I saw at SC22. SC22 is Supercomputing 2022. And last year at SC21, there were only like 3,500 people. So the show was super small and we really focused on liquid cooling because that's pretty much all there was. And there really wasn't that big of an update to liquid cooling. So I thought at SC22, because there were now over 11,000 people there, I said, hey, let's go look at all the really cool exhibitors and let's go take a look at some of the really cool things that were there. And we're gonna get to the fact that yes, they did hand me an ax on the show floor to go cut a liquid cooling loop. We're gonna talk about what that is in a little bit. Now we're gonna cover a ton of stuff in this. So definitely check out the chapter markers in the description. Also, we're gonna have a ton of other stuff that we're gonna talk about here that we're really gonna go into more detail on the STH main site. So if you wanna learn more, go check those links down below. Now we don't have a sponsor for this video. So if you do wanna help us out, you can always join and become an STH member. And that really helps us go buy really cool stuff that we can show you on this YouTube channel. So that'd be super appreciated if you can help, but let's get to it. Now in the AI community, Cerberus is known because they have giant wafer scale engine one and two chips. And then they also have these giant machines that they call the CS2s now. And, you know, we typically either see the, the giant chip or we see these big systems. But the other side to it is that you have to go from a chip to a system. And that's exactly what the company showed on the SC22 show floor when they showed the engine of the CS2. Now what this giant hunk of metal and PCB and stuff is, is this is the power and cooling for that giant chip. So you have that giant chip sandwiched in and need to go and figure out a way to get power and cooling in there. This is how they do it. And one of the big challenges with actually just building the chip wasn't necessarily just fabbing a chip that was that large. One of the biggest challenges was figuring out how the heck you're gonna get enough power or how you're gonna get enough cooling to it to be able to cool that much and then also cool the power delivery stuff. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, but the way to think of this little unit that we're seeing here here is this is basically equivalent to what you would see as like a entire GPU cluster, like maybe a rack or so of GPUs, put that and then all the networking and like, you know, switches that are there and all the, the cables that go along with that. Now take that and put that and power supplies and put that all into, into this little package. And that is what you see on the show floor. This is super cool. Next, one of the biggest themes by far was AMD Epic Genoa. Genoa was everywhere. Asus, for example, had a massive booth and they had tons of different systems like standard Genoa systems, but they also had things like GPU based Genoa systems. They had some Sapphire Rapids too, but they also had things like liquid cooled high density solutions. And that was just a smidge of what we saw elsewhere. Hey guys, it's Fisher Me. A quick interjection here with something you probably have noticed. My brand new sets smiley face that I was so excited to get apparently flickers if we do a normal 30 frames per second setup. So uh, I gotta gotta think of something other than that, but apologies, it's on for this whole thing. We were gonna re-record it, but just didn't have time to. And uh, I thought this was actually kind of good content. So we decided let's keep doing the video, but I'm sorry about this. With that, let's get back to it. Another really cool one that I thought I really liked was the AIC solution. So they had this Genoa server that only had eight DIMMs for the single socket Genoa part, but it had this like front storage solution. Now this front storage solution, they showed both the E1S and also E3S, which are the new EDSFF form factors for storage. I was told that there's a two and a half inch one as well. But one of the cool things is you can actually go up and you just hot swap your drives like you normally would and you'd expect to do. But perhaps the differentiator is that you can take the entire cage and just open it up and take it out of the system and then walk away with all of the drives. Now you might be thinking, why would you need to swap an entire cage? And apparently this was made for a customer that like, let's say for example, that you had a whole bunch of, of ingest data that was going to like a collection point. You can just go pull out the entire thing and then send that back to a main office or data center for processing. Absolutely, that's kind of like super cool, right? And an honorable mention in the AIC booth was that they had a liquid cooling solution that was a two-phase liquid cooling solution, closed the loop and pump and if you want to learn about more about that, you can definitely go check out the STH main site below. And speaking of liquid cooling, Lenovo had their Neptune systems and they've had Neptune for years. It's probably the most bespoke type of liquid cooling that you see on the show floor. Maybe the only other one that I think is kind of close to that might be Atos and then maybe, maybe some of the HPE Cray stuff, but uh, you know, Atos and HPE Cray are actually making like really big supercomputers. So, um, you know, I think that their, their solutions maybe get used more, but Neptunes look cooler. So Lenovo maybe has a cooler looking solution, but those are definitely on the show floor as well. Gigabyte had a whole bunch of different systems and they had a bunch of Genoa systems out 
there. They had motherboards. Now the Gigabyte booth was super fun. I was walking around in the Gigabyte booth for a while and I didn't realize it even when I was looking at the system that my uh, my video was playing in the Gigabyte booth above the server. We looked at an Ampere Ultra Max server with NVIDIA A100 GPUs and we did a video on that recently. And that video or one of the videos was being shown at the booth above the system. So that was super cool Gigabyte. But they also had a whole bunch of other stuff like Genoa systems. They had different kinds of, you know, standard Genoa systems. They had two four node systems, which were very interesting to get to see. The other big one that Gigabyte had was they had this giant GPU server. And it wouldn't necessarily be notable that there's a GPU server based on AMD Epic 9004 Genoa, except for the fact that this was different. This system has the entire front area dedicated to the AMD Epic Genoa dual socket CPU, but really the memory. This server is one of the first ones that we have seen that has two sockets, but each socket has 24 DDR5 DIMMs. That means that you can put not just up to 192 cores before we get to Bergamo and other chips in the future, but you can also manage to fit a total of 48 DDR5 DIMMs. I know on the back, you can go put 10 GPUs if you'd like. So that was just a really cool system. And we're gonna have more on that on the STH main site as well. Inspur had a whole bunch of Genoa systems that we've looked at, but also they they had this one liquid cooling solution in, in particular that I just thought was really cool, this liquid cooled server. It had just giant inlets and, and exhaust, right, for the liquid cooling on both the front and the back. And so I just thought that they had a GP server that looked super cool, so I just wanted to show it off. Tyen had a number of systems, but a lot of them we weren't supposed to photograph. We did, however, get to see a Kyoxia CM7 SSD, which is a PCIe Gen 5 SSD, and this is an E3 S form factor, one of the new EDSFF form factors. And so this is one that hopefully we're gonna see a lot more of in the future. At the Supermicro booth, we saw things like Blade servers and we saw normal servers. We saw all kinds of demos. They had a ton of stuff there. But perhaps the thing that I thought was the coolest was the fact that they had the H100 sitting next to each other in two different solutions. Now these are HGP solutions and you can pick your flavor. Do you want the AMD Epic Genoa? Or do you want the Intel Xeon Sapphire Rapid, so fourth gen Intel Xeon Scalable? We've looked at these systems for many years. We've looked at the 8P100 systems, 8V100 systems. We've done like three of the A100 SXM solutions, not including just the PCIe versions, but we've looked at even the air-cooled versus liquid-cooled in that generation. So it's just kind of cool to see that these are the next-gen H100 systems that are coming. I'm super excited to get to see these. And on that H100 note, Dell finally has an 8H100 solution. Dell has been one of these vendors that I have no idea why. They've just said, hey, we don't really wanna go do AI for many years. And Dell, for some reason, has never wanted to have the system. So your option, if you were a Dell shop, was like to go buy like a super micro box so you could actually have the modern AI solution. But finally, Dell has said, hey, maybe we should get on this AI train. And they now have an HGPU solution that is for SXM. And I just think this is absolutely the right direction for Dell. Hopefully this means that we're going to see Dell compete more on the AI and HPC systems in the future because it seems like they finally have a serious system. Ingresys, which is the division of Foxconn, we looked at their solution with the Ethernet SSDs, which were the Kyoxia NVMe S or NVMe over fabric SSDs that you take an SSD and instead of putting it into like a server using NVMe or SAS or SATA or anything like that, you just literally put it on the network where you have 25 gig ethernet, two ports of that, and that was really the solution. Ingresys made the dual ethernet switch chassis for that and they have a new version that has NVIDIA Spectrum 2 switches in it. So you get higher performance switching, which is always welcome, especially in a storage solution like this. So that was really cool to see. And of course they had Genoa as well. HPE, of course, had their new Cray systems and all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about the really cool thing there. They had an Astro Labs Lunar Rover that was just sitting there with a little edge line system sitting in it. But it was just really cool to actually get to see a Lunar Rover, probably like mock-up or something like that. I don't think it was actually like the one that they would shoot up into space because it was in the middle of the show floor. But on the other hand, it was just really cool to get to see the thing there. And it's always kind of nice. Also, HPE has been pushing the idea of its space-born computer. It's actually sent computers and, and servers up to the ISS and just to show what would happen or look at what would happen with off the shelf ish types of servers packaged for space. And a fun fact there is that the first ones were made by SGI, so they were actually super micro servers that went up in the first space-born computer, but that's now branded as HPE because HPE bought SGI. Still though, it was super cool to see that they're saying like, hey, we're gonna make systems for 
space, but also lunar landers. Microsoft was there and they had some really cool hardware. That included things like having a Genoa system with an absolutely crazy, massive heat sink in. I mean, just look at this chunky thing. And that's really for the you know high performance Genoa platforms. And this heat sink is just crazy, right? They also had an eight OAM module. So if you had like an MI250X or something like that, I think that's what this is for. And uh, you know, one of the fun things there is just the fact that I pointed out this little card and I said, hey, Microsoft, what, like, what, what's that FPGA used for? Or like, you know, is that FPGA? Or like, what's it used for? And the Microsoft rep at that point said, uh, no, that's not an FPGA. And I looked at it a little bit closer and it, it said that it was actually an FPGA. So I, I didn't really uh, keep asking questions of that person while I was at the booth because um, it was kind of a bummer that we didn't get somebody that was like super good on hardware there, but that's what it is. Microsoft, by the way, has some super cool gear. I hope we get to actually show you that soon. Speaking of cool gear, we got to see the NVIDIA Bluefield 3 DPU is actually sitting in the Lenovo booth. And uh, that's something that we have not been able to get, which is a total bummer. We've done a lot of work on the NVIDIA Bluefield 2 DPUs. We also, you can see over here off to my shoulder over here, you can see that we have both the Pensando and also the Marvell Action 10 DPU, but this is really the next generation NVIDIA DPU. And uh, hopefully it's supposed to be better performing than the previous gen, so we'll see. But at least we saw one at the show, which feels like an improvement. Now, days before SC22, Intel launched its Maxis, or the two Max series, which are the Intel Data Center GPU Max series, as well as the Intel CPU Max series. And those are the two products for HPC, and one, of course, is GPU, and these are really kind of the high-performance GPUs, formerly known as Pontevecchio. And then you also have the Max series CPU, which used to be Sapphire Rapids HBM. At the show, there were definitely more OEM modules and we saw a lot of, you know, like four, four OEM systems and stuff like that. But to me, at least the cool thing that we got to see was the PCIe version, which is the Max 1100 series, because frankly, it's pretty easy to go take a PCIe GPU then throw it into a server these days. So I think that this is actually gonna have a lot of Ponte Vecchio sales by, you know, when it's all, all done and, you know, all the numbers are tallied, I think it's actually gonna do a, a pretty big number. And we got to see a bunch of them, got to see different parts of it and different levels of being put together. And so it's just kind of really get cool to get to see all this on the SC22 show floor. On the subject of liquid cooling, we saw a new 500 kilowatt CDU at Cool IT's booth. They also had a redundant and hot swappable pump unit with a reservoir. Now, if you want to learn more about Cool IT liquid cooling, I actually did a video up in Calgary in March when it was very cold, and I showed how you go and put together an entire loop starting from a bathroom hose and cool up to 20,000. AMD Epic Milan cores with just the CDU, the, the, the 200 kilowatt CDU, by the way. So this is the 500 kilowatt. So at that rate, it would be doing like 50,000 AMD Epic Milan cores. That's absolutely crazy. And it was just kind of cool to see the big new 10U CDU there. More links for those videos, of course, in the description. But on that subject of liquid cooling, let's talk about the Axe, right? I was able to go and take this ax and this company called Chilldyne, they handed me an ax on the show floor and said, hey, this is a liquid cooling loop. It's running right now. It's cooling servers. Patrick, go up for it and just take this ax and destroy this tube. And so that's what I did. I cut the tube on a cutting block and you saw a little bit of liquid spill, but then the like solution just absolutely stopped moving more liquid through and it just, it just wasn't gushing out like it normally would. Chilldyne has a what's called a negative pressure loop. And what that essentially does means is that they have like a vacuum as part of their loop. And with that vacuum, they're able to create different uh, negative pressure zones in their solution. And actually, and maybe we can go into this later at a later date, but that allows them to, instead of just pushing liquid straight through the system and just kind of like hoping it gets to the other side, they actually have that suction and that suction is under negative pressure is what means that you don't just see this thing gush all the heck over the place like you normally would see in a liquid cooling solution. I bet your desktop could not do that. But as a quick warning, don't do this on like your desktop loop because if you cut your tube on your desktop loop, most likely it's gonna gush all over and break stuff. So please don't do this at home. This was a specific demo using their specific technology. I, Chilldyne has actually been around for a while. I don't really know why this is not more popular because it seems like this is actually a really good and smart technology because a lot of people are worried about leaking and there's a little bit of leak, but it's not like catastrophic like you would see in another system. And we also did just the little loops like inside servers 
and stuff like that. And, and that worked as well. So I, I, I don't know uh, why it's not more popular. Maybe it's going to become more popular. I think it is actually in the future, but we'll definitely see on that. As a quick note here, I have absolutely no idea what happened to the memory card with the Azrock rack full uh photos. I, I have no idea. I was just talking to a ton of people. And so I have no idea. So I apologize. Uh, we're just going to do more reviews, I guess, of their server. So check out the SDH main site for that. One of the coolest things also was the fact that there was a CXL demo area. Now we've covered CXL a ton and we've looked at things like the Samsung CXL units. And hopefully we're going to ask, and I think we're going to see those kind of later in 2023 next year. But uh, there were a lot of demos running. Like for example, Micron had its solution running. And so we saw the CXL Micron demo and they were showing their stuff. We also saw the Astera Labs. And QCT, for example, took one of these Astera Labs Leo boards. And what you see in here is that we have a total of four DIMM slots and these are DDR5 DIMM slots. And with four DDR5 DIMM slots, you're able to go and take this by 16 card, put it into a server like QCT is doing, and you get to add not just the memory capacity, but also you get to get more memory bandwidth than you get with just having the DDR4 channels that are on a CPU. So just order of magnitude here with the by 16 connector, you get about two DDR5 five channels worth of memory bandwidth. And the latency is about like what it would look like if you went from like one CPU socket and went into the memory of the other CPU socket. So the other NUMA node, that's about the extra latency involved. So CXL memory expanders, I think are going to be a lot bigger as we kind of get later into 2023, but we are going to show you this with the AMD Epic Genoa system. It was just really cool that QCT had a demo running with Sapphire Rapids on the show floor. We also saw microchip solution, but last time we saw it, it was not running, uh, running at PCA Gen 5 speeds, and now it actually was. So that was super cool to see at the show. There's another company called Unifabrics, which is really working on these CXL memory devices and how you manage all of those things. And so I, I think that that's something that we're probably gonna deep dive a little bit later on on the STH main site. But suffice to say, there was a lot of CXL happening on the show floor. That was super cool to see because that's been something that we've been working on on STH and hoping to see for years. So it's fun to actually get to see that on the show floor. But by far, the number one experience that I had at SD was just getting to meet everybody, all the STH folks. I took like hundreds of selfies with folks and so many people were just coming up to me and saying like, hey, you know, you helped or STH. I've been reading for like 10 years and I've been you know, an avid reader and it's been helping me in you know work. It's been helping me with my product. It's informed how we do products. It's been helping me sell stuff. I mean, just all these different stories about how STH has impacted people's lives and even like how how people have learned how to get how to do things and and get jobs just because they've been really doing their research on STH. So to me at least, the number one thing was by far just getting to meet everybody. I was actually uh, you know frankly surprised with how many folks came and said hi. I know it takes a lot to go and do that. So if you ever see me at a trade show, feel free to come and say hi. It was just super cool to get to meet everyone. It was also overwhelming, and I was way behind schedule the entire show because I kept talking to folks. But hey, if you want to support STH and you want to see all the really cool stuff that we are going to do because. You you can obviously see a lot of it behind me. Well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.